Morning everybody. Lovely day here in the last gallery studio. Nice weather outside, bit cloudy but not raining. I hope you're all okay. Um, send me a comment or ask me a question and let me know you're here if you're watching. Um, I'm going to talk today about apps for your smartphones and iPads and tablets and um, laptops. I know that quite a lot of you have been asking me about how to draw and paint on these things. So, and most people have no information. They may have looked at a couple of apps on their phones, but um, because there's quite an array of apps available now, it's quite annoying having to sort of trawl through them. Um, you can look online and you'll get a variety of recommendations from different people. Um, some good, some bad, you know. It really depends on where they live. Uh, like a lot of the sites are coming from America, so obviously there are certain apps that will only work over there. Morning, Paula. Nice to hear from you. Hope you're okay. Um, as you can see, I've dyed my hair red. I've gone for the ginger red group this time. Seeing as the grey didn't work, as, as my students will know, the grey didn't work, so I thought I'll change and go red. <laughs> what colour is your hair, Paula? I know you change a lot. Um, so, yeah, so. I suppose I'm not an expert, so, you know, you can sort of take my advice, go and explore, um, but look at other people's advice as well. It really depends on what item you're using. I have an iPhone. Hi, Anne. How are you? Um, I have an iPhone and an iPad, which I borrowed off my daughter, and my laptop. I don't use my laptop mainly because it's heavy and I don't want to drag it around. The nice thing about an iPad or a tablet and an iPhone or a smartphone, Android phone, whatever, is that you can pop them in your bag and you can go off down the park or down the common or up on the mountains and draw, which is great, obviously. Um, it's a different way of working. Um, to using a sketchbook and we had a I, I did a tutorial recently about using sketchbooks I'm not saying don't use sketchbooks because obviously that's another beautiful thing in itself um, but these can add to your uh, plan planning if you're going to make a painting you know you can do some quick sketches on your iPhone or your smartphone uh, you can also do some sketches in your sketch pad and they look different, they feel different. I mean, if you know the artist David Hockney, he is world renowned for using his iPad and he's done films, moving sketches, moving drawings, uh, huge drawings he's um, magnified up onto large canvases. So the possibilities are endless. Um, so I'm just going to try and give you a quick introduction and then you can go off and look and then if you have issues then just send me a message and ask me again or whatever and just have a bit of fun. Um, the main thing is not to get frustrated. Um, choose two or three apps, play with them for a bit, um, put them down, pick them up again, try them in different places, all that sort of stuff and then decide which one you like. Okay, so the first thing to, to sort of really talk about is that it's really important that you know what you've got. So, for example, some apps work on an iPhone, but not on an Android phone. An Android for a phone is basically everything other than an iPhone. Um, in the same way that some apps will work on tablets um, and others will only work on iPads. So usually if you try and download an app, it will say this is only for this this um, iPhone or a smartphone or whatever. 
Um, most of them nowadays are for all of them, so that's quite good. It's changed a bit. A few years ago, it's really difficult because obviously you couldn't use things on iPhones and da da da, all that sort of stuff. So know what you've got in front of you. Um, then um, the next issue is how you look for them. So on your phone, you'll have an app search icon, and you go into that app search icon and um, you tap on it, if I can find it, I'll show you. So my, my one is there, it's the blue one just here, right? But on your phone it may look different. All right, so you just tap App Store and that will come up. Now this is saying because my Wi-Fi is off on my phone it won't show us. But then that, that then gives you almost like a Google page, search page. So you just type in anything you want. So if you put in drawing apps, then it'll it'll give you a stream of drawing apps. And you basically just choose the one that you want. It, each one has recommendations and star settings. So it tells you, and sometimes reviews from other people, which is really useful. Always read reviews. Um, and then you tap on it, download it onto your phone, and then you can use it. OK, so and also once you've used it, if you decide you don't like it, then you just delete it. So there's no issues. Most of these phones, they don't need any kind of uh, signing up facility apps. Sorry, don't need any signing up. They just need um, access to your phone. Um, and obviously people are worried about uh, details being taken and things like that. But things are so tight these days that it's really difficult. Um, they may ask you for your email address and things like that, but it's really, really rare these days that they'll do that. OK, so you just need access to your phone and they can't pinch details off you and all that sort of stuff. So as long as you've got a good security on your phone, on your tablet, on your um, laptop, as long as your security is updated, etc., etc., you should be fine. So don't worry about downloading these things. OK. So the next thing to think about is whether it's free or paid. So some of them are free and some of them offer um, usage of half of the tools and things like that for free. And then the other half are paid for. So you don't have to pay for them. Just use the free ones. And then if you enjoy the package that you're working with, then you can upgrade and, da -da, and then they give you more tools and more options. And I'll explain that later when I show you a few. Um, the next thing is whether you want to use your finger or a stylus. I don't have a stylus. I did have one, but I had to send it to my sister in Finland because she lost hers. Um, so I use my finger and it's fine. You know, I, I seem to manage quite well with that. But if you want more precision, then you get a stylus. And it looks a bit like one of these rub out pens. Right. It has an it's a stick with an, a sort of rubberized end on it. Yeah. Um, and that just allows you to draw like you would using a pencil. OK. Um, so. Those are the main issues. Uh, the benefits of using um, these apps are um, it allows you to experiment in a different format. It allows you to experiment really, really quickly because when, for example, when you're coloring in, it's instant and it's solid, which I find brilliant because a lot of my work is very flat. And um, obviously that is brilliant for, for, for me. Um, the more drawing you do, the more painting you do, no matter what you use, you'll improve. So if you can be doing it like in, in, the seat of your car. And, and in fact, I got this magazine this morning from the SAA. And interestingly enough, on the front is an image. And this image has been done on an iPad. And it's been done by uh, an artist called Steve Crowther, who lives in Accrington, I think he said, somewhere up north anyway, somewhere near where I come from. And he uses the iPad to create paintings on his iPad and then he downloads them and then works onto them at home. Um, so he works in watercolour mainly 
and you'll find that some of these apps do offer a watercolour setting, which is great, you know. So he's been out wandering around his locality during the lockdown and making these lovely images um, with his iPad. So, you know, there's no reason not to have a go this afternoon, maybe if it stops raining. I don't know if it's going to rain. It might rain. I think it's supposed to be decent, actually. I'm going for a picnic at seven o'clock, so I'm hoping it's going to be decent. Um, okay. So, yeah, in, it allows you to improve and experiment. It also stops you from being a little bit precious because you can undo things really easily. You can rub out things really easily. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, so undoing and redoing. Um, you can also use your photographs so you can download a photograph onto the app and then work on top of it using sketch tools and all that sort of stuff. That's really fun. That's what my sister does a lot of. That's Lisa Roberts in Finland. Hi Lisa, if you're watching, I miss you. Um, she finds images from sort of car boot sales and uh, charity shops and things like that and she will take a photograph of it and then upload it to the app and then work on top of it so check out her work and um have a bit of fun with, uh, you know using the styles that she uses you know it's really interesting okay um so using photographs uh, one of the main issues is storage because obviously if you really enjoy using these apps um storage becomes an issue especially if it's on your phone um, and on your ipad if you haven't got much memory so uh, one of the recommendations is, is that you use something like google um google photo apps so that what that does is it allows you to upload your finished sketches and photographs etc etc films even some of them you can do films on um, you can upload them to google photo app um, and then they will store it for you rather than it being on your phone or on your laptop or on your iPad or whatever. OK, so that's a really good tip. If you're like me, you've got thousands of photographs on your phone already. You don't need any more bulky storage. And, and obviously, the more colours and more detail you put into the drawings, the more storage it needs. OK, so think about that as well. Uh, it might be that you just do the drawings and then delete them. It's up to you. Um, so storage, um, portability, think about what you're going to do. So if you're going to go out sketching using the app, you're going to need a connection. That's one thing. So um, you need a connection to Wi-Fi or, um, you know, a good contract so that you can use your phone outside. Um, or your tablet. Um, the battery life of your item, obviously, you know, make sure you charge your item first before you go out and sketch, and the portability of it. So obviously, a little iPhone is great. Um, you have a good connection, and it's fully charged. Um, but obviously, you're limited by the size of the screen. So Think about that. If you have an iPad, then obviously you've got a bigger screen. David Hockney works on an iPad. So, yeah. Okay. Now, we have a few apps to look at. Um, I'm going to just shift so you won't see me um, and use Layla's iPad. Um, if it works, that is and open a couple of these recommended apps okay so you won't see me you'll just see the ipad and i'm hoping that you'll be able to see it properly all right so i'm going to sit oops here and then it's sort of a bit of a jig around and i'm hoping you can see that okay um if you can't see it or if it's really weird then hopefully it's not too bad the sunlight is not too bad in here today so it seems to be okay 
So on here, she's got all her usual, this is an iPad, same as a tablet. She's got a photo, a camera, Safari, all that sort of stuff. And then I've downloaded these six apps. So we've got Sketches, Sketchbook, Sketch Tree, Drawing Pad, Paper and Sketchbook. Um, these uh, one, two, three, four are sort of very basic um, level um, drawing and painting apps. Paper is a more sophisticated one in the fact that it gives you um, almost like a sketchbook feel. It gives you papers and, and uh, uh, different layers to your sketches. And this one is a more professional one. And I've got another one on my phone, which I couldn't download on here because this is only updated to iOS 10.3, I think. And that's another consideration is that you have to have an updated phone to use certain apps. Some of these apps have been around for years, and that means that you can use them on anything. Um, but if you've got a sort of uh, a more current app that's been put online, then you need to have a very up to date phone. So there's one here. Um, this one, for example, I don't know if you can see that it's called Sketchbook. Can you see that sketchbook? This is my iPhone here, and this will only work on my iPhone because I've got iOS 11 on here and it needs that to work. Whereas all these work on iOS 10 and less. So just be aware of that. If it says your phone needs updating for this, then update it. Um, but if it doesn't want to update, then just use the ones that are from a while back. Okay, so let's start with um, drawing pad. So you can see it just opens up. Um, it says drawing pad would like to send you notifications. I don't like notifications, so I never allow. So I press don't allow. Uh, and then you just go into one of the, that's if it works. There, see? And this gives you uh, a variety of options. So this is backwards and forwards. This is for sharing. So if you want to send your image to a person, then that will email. That's to download. So you download it and save it onto your onto your item, phone, um, tablet or laptop. And that's just add another page. These are your colours. Can you see this OK? Yeah, seemingly. Hopefully it's working. This is size. So this is the size of the tool. So it's like the size of a brush. So down here would be for your smaller brushes and up here would be for your bigger brushes. Opacity is whether it's transparent or opaque. And then down here, you've got a variety of tools. I'm only going to do this really basically just so that you can have a play later on. So it's currently on brush, right? And it's on red. I'm going to change it to green. Really simple. And then you just use your finger and you draw like that yeah and then if you want to rub it out there's a rubber there okay and then you just rub out this is a paint color picker but we haven't got any colors at the moment these are scissors that's you can draw an out outline and cut things out um, this is a blur so you can sort of, if you go over, I don't know if you can see that, if you rub over the top of your marks with your finger, it just starts to blur them down. It's almost like you're rubbing it in with your finger. This is a spray can. Now, this is quite fun because obviously you've got a colour and it sprays really lovely marks. However, on this one, you've got patterns. So you can spray in patterns um all sorts of different let's have a look what else have we got tartan by the looks of it oh no i'm gonna let's try that one so there's all sorts of different patterns with that um this one see this is what comes up so this is an example of um additions so for on some um apps it will only allow you to use a certain amount of the tools and then some of them you have to pay for so when you buy pro this is the pro version of this one, then it costs 99 
sense, this is an American app, um, in order to use the extra um, tools. So access to all pro features, the extra stickers, drawing remote, etc, etc. So you don't have to do that. You just press restore, although it might not do because it's trying to download that now. No, it's not going to go back. So um, because I've got no connection on this iPad um, to the Wi-Fi, it's trying to find it. So it won't stop doing that now. So I'm just going to switch it off and I'm going to go to another one. So this is Scratch Sketch Tree. Is it going to open up the other way? Oop. So it's offered me that again. Now it won't work. Some of this sometimes they'll only work on portrait. Can you see the whole thing? Yeah, hopefully. Right. So on this one, this is sketch tree. You've got similar sort of um, things here. You've got the addition of shapes. So that will give you heart shapes. Rubber again. You can rub out. Pencil. Now this, if you press the pencil, it gives you all these tools. This is great because on here you've got watercolour, right? So for all my students who come to watercolour sessions or use watercolour, this is lovely, right? So I'm just going to, first of all, before I do that, I'm just going to rub this heart out. Right, so go back to the watercolour. So this is your, your colour picker, right? So... Uh, well, that's your size picker and this is your color picker if you go to here it can change colors so let's just draw a really simple um, seascape in watercolor right so we've got the watercolor brush on here and we're just going to oops oh, hang on let's go to watercolor i'm just going to pick that color again so here we have, and we're just going to, and you can look how lovely that is. And what happens is with this, is if you do one stroke, it's light. Can you see this? I hope you can see it. Uh, one stroke, it's light. And then if you go over the top of it, it darkens it. But it's still got that lovely watercolour feel. Change the colour, not the brush, the colour, to, let's have some sandy sandy color like that and then we'll have some green for the hills maybe so you can see how this builds up really lovely and obviously if you work over the top of things then it blends so if you go the, with the green on top of the yellow there it blends so that's really gorgeous and you can put sort of features in by darkening things up and stuff like that. Yeah. And then maybe we'll have some sky. Oops. Um, I can't remember which colour I used. Was it that one? Oh, that looks a bit purpley. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go to that one and put some sky in. You can also put a background on to begin with. So there you go. You've got a bit of sea, a bit of beach, a bit of mountain and a bit of sky. Um, you know, if you wanted then to add, say, a bit of pencil. Um, choose the colour of your pencil. Uh, let's see, what should we use? Dark green? Would that come out nice? Then you could sort of just draw. Now, the line is very fine there. So I'm going to increase the line and then it and then you can draw into it like that. You could maybe put some trees or suggestion of trees coming down like that along that edge. Anyway, OK, so that just gives you a, a really quick introduction to that one. Um, let's try this one that's going back to landscape oops so this one is a very basic um, setup but 
still good. Okay, so it's got all your features down the side here. You've got um, a rubbish bin, so you can just clear it, uh, wipe it away. You've got um, rubber, you've got stamps on this one. Let's try stamps. So that you can put rabbits, rabbits in. <laughs> Stickers, wolves. Oh, one wolf there. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's got a long leg now. Look, I put some shadows under there. Photos, right? So you can add a photograph. Now these are just colours. Uh, oops. Uh, but you can go into your camera, into or into your gallery. Um, you have to allow it so that it can access. But this may need Wi-Fi again. So in order to access it, yeah, it's frozen. So that's because I've got Wi. I have. I haven't got Wi-Fi in here for my laptop. So just be aware of that. Let's go back. Okay. So it works the same way. Um, this one's got shapes. Actually, if we put canvas, I don't know what that means, right? So, oh yeah. So what that does is it colours the background for you, which is really useful. And then you can put shapes into it. Select a circle. Oh no, maybe this isn't going to work again. Right. So that doesn't want to select. A, will it allow me to do that? No. Okay. So this is what it comes up with if it doesn't like what you want to do. So it's saying that you have to pay extra for that. So we won't use that. So once you've done something, so let's just, um, ooh, oh, it was allowing me to put a square in though, look. Let's change the colour. Oh, there we go, some drawing, right. So once you've got your image, you can then save it, all right? So save to photographs, all right? Or you can clear it. So it's saying, are you sure you want to erase everything? Erase. So you're back to your white screen. All right. So that those are the basic ones. This one is called Paper. And it it is a, a tool that my sister uses and also something that my daughter was really interested in. She did a bit of research for me. So it allows you to actually have a sketchbook. All right. So that's the information. All of these give you a little helping hand. So it's saying paper tools, 11 pages. So there you've got 11 pages, right? So um, oh, that was just information, I think. So add. So next page. So you click on it and then you can do your drawing. Oh, no, hang on. Draw. I'm just going to do this very basic. Uh, and then you close it and it goes on to the page, right? So you can see all of these pages are full. So it's actually a sketchbook. So that's quite nice, especially if you want to um, produce a sketchbook yourself. So if we go back to one of the blank, oops, sorry, not right. So add click on the page and these are all the tools that you've got so here you can add photographs you can add templates now we used to have, I don't know what we have oh and graphs and line grids and storyboards and look so if you put that one in then it gives you a little so if you remember from my sketchbook tutorial I was saying if you put little squares down and put different things in the squares and then you can just do whatever Hi, stay safe. So you can put a different thing in each box like that. Uh, and then it will put it onto the page. So that's quite cool. So that's the only difference with that paper tool. Um, this is the most, um, one of the nicest ones that I've found myself for my use. Um, including this one uh, which is on my iPhone this sketchbook one which is also really nice to use all right but it's a similar sort of get up you can see I've started here already um, and that was 
that was a, a bit of a play that I had earlier on. So, like I said, you can use your eraser, you can get rid of all this if you want to, but it gives you a load of um, different tools to play with, which is really wonderful. This is the paintbrush and it's currently in red. So, oh, oh yes, sorry, it did work. So that's the paintbrush, really beautiful. And like you said, you can work on over in layers and just darken up those areas. Um, that gives you a nice line. Um, whoop, let's see what's up here. Right, that this also allows you to do video. So that's your save button. And that's your pictures back again. Okay, so how do you change your colour? Your colours are there and layers are there. So this will allow you to work in layers, which is really useful. So you can work on one bit, save it, and then work on a second bit, which layers over the top. Uh, and then if you need to undo that second layer, it will just get rid of the second layer and leave the first one behind. So that's really useful. OK, but as you can see, they're all very similar. I'm going to come back to seated now. Um, I'll just move this again. Hi again, everybody. I hope that wasn't too long winded. I know it can be a bit sort of overwhelming um, with all the information, but um, I hope it's helped. Um, if it hasn't and you've got questions, please, you know, don't hesitate to send me a question. Um, this will be live on um, my YouTube channel later on. So if you need to refresh, rewatch, make notes, da da da, I'll put all the information of all the names of the, um, the apps at the bottom in the comments section so you can refer back to them. Um, I'm trying to think. So my sister, Lisa Roberts of Finland, said that she favours Pocket, Paper and Procreate and she uses the Google Photo app to store images. Um, and like I said, she's been, uh, especially with paper, she's been using them for quite a few years now um, and she uses a stylus for that. Um, Layla said, uh, this is Layla, my daughter, <laughs> who is no artist um, but tries really hard um and does some good work but it's not her main interest but obviously she's inspired by being able to use her ipad and her and her iphone um and to draw quickly you know what kids are like they just like instant hits and um and as as do some adults but um it obviously really appeals to her but she said sketchbook was had was good all round um but it's a bit small and fiddly on the phone sketch tree better a bit more personalization um the drawing pad was um more for kids it's a bit basic um paper she said she'll keep that one mainly because she likes the fact of having a, a bit actual visual sketchbook uh and it's bit more professional and she would probably pay for it so to pay for that one it's 4.99 i think it is so once you pay that's it so it's often worth um i'm really tight and frugal <laughs> which is you know it's not a, not a great way to be sometimes um and i've been told like there's a really good um, plant identification app which identify, identifies plants from its leaves. And because I'm really rubbish at um, remembering names of plants and things, and it's, it, it's been brilliant. And it only cost me, I think it was five or six quid. And the benefits have been absolutely enormous. So they had a free version, uh, which just sort of identified base, basic garden plants. Um, but I think it was five or six quid to have the pro version and it's just been invaluable so don't be frightened of spending a little bit of money upgrading to a pro version uh, that's that's all i have to say <laughs> okay so one more thing 
I got, well, it was Layla's birthday uh, a couple of weeks ago. She got this really good thing from my sister. Sorry, just got to get some water. And it's called a Buddha board. And you can get them online. And they're, it comes like this, right? So it's a board. And let me show you the box so that you can see what it looks like proper. So it has a little prop like that, right? So it has, a, it's, it's a tablet in sort of tablet form. It's not electric. It's just a, it's a water sensitive board. It has a little stand with a pot in it and a Chinese brush, right? And it's, it's all zen, right? <laughs> so that's the idea. The idea of it is that you do a drawing on it in water and then it disappears. And it's so lovely because especially if you're a precious type like I am and I want to get and Layla is particularly it's done her an awful lot of good because she's not worried about what she's doing because it's going to disappear in like five minutes so you take your water and your Chinese brush and you like, I'm going to try and do this without being able to see it properly <laughs> So it's a it's a water sensitive board. So you just use water and this Chinese brush and you paint onto it. So and it's really lovely. So this is another thing that you could take out with you because it's quite light. And, you know, I'm just going to draw a flower. Um, because we've got lots of flowers in our garden at the moment. And sitting out in the garden, drawing a few flowers with your Buddha board. It's nothing short of beautiful. So you can see that the surface of the board is sensitive to the water that I'm putting on here. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, it, obviously I'm trying my best here, but um, you know, you've got to understand I'm doing it on the side here um, but you can see how it works and I don't know if you can see already it's starting to disappear so you can if you want um, take photographs of your images but that's not really the point of this wonderful thing right it's the idea is that you just draw for the sheer hell of drawing and you don't think I'm saving this for the future you're not worried about making mistakes you're just going to enjoy it and produce something beautiful that only you see nobody else will see it because it's a secret and it'll disappear in a moment so you can see it's already disappearing, but isn't that ace? I was so pleased when my sister bought this for my, well, my sister showed me this online when I was having a Zoom chat with her, um, I think it was over Easter, and, I was, and she was writing messages on it. It was so funny, because uh, obviously you can do that secret messaging, which is just ace. Um, but secret drawings, drawings between people, you know, if you're, online with somebody you can do a drawing quickly for somebody and show it to them and then they, only they see it nobody else will ever see it it'll only ever be in their memory how cool is that so yeah um i'm going to have a play with this and do a few bits and bobs and master the art of letting go and being a bit more zen especially in this time in these times that we're in at the moment i know that we're releasing out of lockdown soon oh and the other thing so that was the buddha board I'll bring it in to the classes so you can have a play and then if you like it you can go out and get yourself one I think they're only 20 quid and there's no electric by the way there's no you don't have to charge anything this is another nice thing about it is there's no charging it's no no battery life don't need lights don't need anything right no no wi-fi <laughs> so. okay so with regard to that I was just saying about um, going back to uh, learning in the classroom 
I mean, if things keep chugging along as they're going, it looks like we probably will be back at the end of September in Carmarthen. Um, I'm hoping so. I know this is 40 minutes. I'm terribly sorry. I'm such a gas bag. Um, but this is the last thing I'll say. <laughs> um, but I am doing um, Zoom. And if you haven't used Zoom before, I'm hoping that some of you have because obviously you have used it to contact family over this time. Um, it's a really easy application to use on your um, tablet or uh, iPhone or smartphone or uh, laptop. Um, and I'm going to do Zoom classes. And they're going to be from Monday the 13th till Friday the 17th of July. Um, there's information on the Carmarthen Community Education uh, web uh, Facebook page. Um, I'm going to do on Monday, there will be beginners watercolours in the morning, mixed media in the afternoon. Tuesday, advanced watercolours and drawing in the afternoon. Wednesday, beginners acrylics and colour theory in the afternoon. Uh, Thursday, sorry, I'm just looking at my list. Uh, Thursday, morning advanced acrylics and botanical painting in the afternoon. Friday, I'm just doing one abstract painting. So if you need any inf more information about those, look online, look on my Facebook page. Um, I'll put a little advert on YouTube as well, I think. Um, but get in touch soon because they are booking up. All right. Nice to see you all. Uh, I hope that's helped. I'm, I'm sorry it went on a bit long. I plan to talk only for half an hour, but I always seem to go over, 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 over. I don't know why. Um, leave comments, like this page, like this um, talk, uh, subscribe to YouTube, look at my classes on YouTube and just keep in touch. And it's good to see you all. Thanks for joining in if you joined today and I'll see you next week.